Hallelujah. Mount Zion Nation. Hallelujah. Come on. Wherever you are, come on and praise him. Are you ready to give God a great praise? If you are, if you can, come on and put your hands on the beat like this. Come on. Come on. Hey. Hallelujah. Everybody clap your hands. Say, everybody clap. Well, hi, I'm Bishop Joseph Walt Walker III, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Mount Zion Church right here in Nashville, Tennessee. We are excited to have you connected today. Listen, wherever you are watching around the world, know that we don't take it for granted. We're just grateful. This is our Bible study, and man, we are excited to have you grow with us in the Word of God. Make no mistake about it. When we grow, we're very intentional about growing in His Word. Now, part of that is being connected. We want you to stay connected with us. Follow me at Joseph Walker 3 on Instagram, Twitter. Follow my wife, 
Dr. Steph Walker, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We'd love to be connected with you. You know, we're excited because we're in the last week of a 21-day fast. We call it Faith Fit. We've been on this journey for 21 days. We've been growing together. We've been praying together. We've been spending 21 minutes every day in intentional study and growing and reflecting. And We've been eating right, taking care of our body, our temple, and we want you to know that you're on the right stream because there is such a powerful anointing. And boy, today's message is going to transform your life. So don't you move. Don't you move. Stay right there. Let me tell you something. I'm grateful to God for so many of you. I thank you so much for supporting my new book. It's called Leadership and Loneliness. I want every person to get a copy of it. I want it to bless you. I want it to pour into you. I want this to be something that can help you become the leader that God would have you become. Now, here's what I want you to do. Go to josephwalker3.org and this will be a blessing for your life. Now, I want to thank God for you and if we're going to prepare our hearts right now to give, let's give enthusiastically. Let's give with the great intentionality I'm going to be doing something to stretch you even after this Bible study, so stay tuned. But I want you right now, let's do it. Our tithe, our offering, let's do it right now. Let's pray our hearts as we give. That many of you do that every week. Text to give. The information is on the screen right now. Not only that, but you can also give uh, by mailing it in. Mount Zion Baptist Church Care Finance Department, 7594 Ohrick Boulevard, White Creek, Tennessee, 37189. We thank you. So, Father, thank you right now for the seed we're sowing into good ground, and we thank you that every family be blessed today. And as we grow in your word today, God, open up our minds and our spirits that we might receive this revelation today. Let us grow and be who you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you ready? Let's get into part four. As we close out this series on first things first, we've talked about faith, family, and Friends, last week we were talking about fitness. I hope some of y'all are getting it together. But now I want to talk about finance. And I believe if there ever was a time when we talk about this area, it's right now. We got to get this in order, people of God, because our economy is not tied to the world system. This is a kingdom agenda. And financial stress affects so many people. I have seen 2020 affect people and impact people's lives in ways that are unimaginable. And there are some of us today who are trying to carve out a path to really understand what will God say? What does God's word say about my financial legacy, my destiny? How do I handle what God has blessed me with appropriately? I want to talk about that today and God's purpose for all of us is to not be frustrated or preoccupied with money, making it and spending it, accumulating it. But God wants us to have a level of peace about that and to understand that we can have money, but money doesn't have to have us. So as we seek wise counsel, and I encourage you to do that, getting a good financial advisor and talking to folks that can help you navigate this space. But I want to I help us understand the principle of stewardship, first of all. What is a steward? A steward is one who manages another's resources. Each of us is a manager and not an owner. So what I have to be honest about is that whatever I have, God owns. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So if it belongs to God, God has allowed me through relationship to be a manager of it. And no owner wants a manager who's a mess. A manager operates with a level of integrity to protect the interests of the owner. So we must live our lives in a way that says we are blessed stewards of what God has given to us and ultimately we want the owner to be pleased with what he has entrusted in our care. We as Christians need to trust God in every circumstance. 
And if we believe that God loves us and gives to us only that amount of money that can handle what we need, we're missing God. Man, God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or believe. But God doesn't want you just to have money without peace. See, this is about I want the peace of God over my life as well. It becomes clear that money is really the training ground for God to develop our trustworthiness. Luke chapter 16, verse 11. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? If, if you have not been faithful in the stuff you had, why would God entrust you with more? As Christians, you know, we, we have difficulty trusting God in this area. We don't believe that God has our best interests at heart. So we tend to withhold that part from God. We tend to say, well, Lord, you can handle every area of my life, but when it comes to my money, my money, my money, I got this. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter if you got 30,000 or 30 million. Let me tell you something. It all belongs to God. And the Lord give it, and the Lord can show enough take away. So you have to check your attitude on control. There are moments when you must clearly define when God is not in control. There are moments in your life when you say, I'm doing this and I need to let God do it. See, God will not use money in our lives to worry us. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, Therefore I say that you do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? You see, wealth without worry is God's plan for your life. Say it again. Wealth without worry. Come on, say it. Wealth without worry. Put that in the chat. Wealth without worry. God promises to supply your need. From that belief, we can concentrate on other things using the ability God has given to us to complete the plan of God and what he has for our lives. See, God will never use money to corrupt us. Psalm 1 and 6 says, The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. A Christian whose financial life is characterized by greed and ego, deceit, and any worldly snare is not living to the glory of God. See, a lot of people, the more money they get, the more corrupt they become. Because whatever you are at one level just translates to another level. If, you, if you're not a tither at one level, you get more money, you're not going to be a tither. If you're cheap at one level, you're going to be cheap. So you got to say, Lord, I want to make sure I'm not, I'm not misrepresenting you in this. God will never use money in our lives to build our egos. See, frequently we find that Christians are trapped by financial ego because of inherent capitalistic views, most people cater to the wealth and the wealthy. The book of James reminds us not to admonish wealth because things of the world will quickly fade away. In James 1, 10 and 11, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. As a flower of the field, he'll pass away. For no sooner has the sun risen with the burning heat than it withers the grass, its flower falls, and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits. You know what makes that interesting is the fact that people of God, it is, it is a powerful, a very powerful thing to hear. I want you to get this. I want you to really process, I want you to really pay attention to this, that we must not believe that God doesn't want us to have. He just doesn't want us to worship what we have. 
See, that's this idea, you know, people have this blessed guilt. And I don't want you to have blessed guilt. I want you to know God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be blessed. But he doesn't want you to worship it. Because this stuff will fade away. None of it will go with you when you leave here. You came into this world naked, and you're going to leave out of here naked. But God will use money to unite Christians through shared resources. You have to ask God, Lord, how do you want me to use what you bless me with for the advancement of your kingdom? Bro, could you imagine what would happen if everybody thought that way? In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 14 and 15, but by an equality that now at this time your abundance may supply their lack and their abundance also may supply your lack, that there may be equality. As it is written, he who has gathered much had nothing left over, and he who gathered little had no lack. When we hoard and we're not generous, we prevent the plan of God from manifesting in our lives. The idea of giving and shall be given, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give into your bosom. God never wants you to be a reservoir of selfishness. He wants you to be a channel of blessings. And if God can't get a blessing through you, through you, he'll stop sending blessings to you, to you. Can you think about when God brings you into money, if God brings you into something? Lord, Lord, first of all, how do I, how can I be a blessing to the kingdom? How can I be a blessing to your people? That becomes the first thing you ought to raise. And people of God, listen, God will use money to develop our trustworthiness. See, God then begins to give small things at first because we're only able to trust him with the small things. But then God gives us larger things as his confidence in us begins to grow. See, in Romans 10, 11, and 12, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. So God has this amazing capacity of things he wants to do in our lives, but he gives it to us based on our level of maturity. How much can you handle? I raise this question all the time. I raise it all the time. How high can God take you without losing you? How much can God give you without losing you? It's easy to trust God when you're rubbing two nickels together, but when God finally brings you into blessing, you get the promotion, you get the job, you get the contract, you get all the good stuff that God wants to do, do you still trust him? See, how is God's will expressed in our finances? There's a powerful study here, a case study of the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25. I want to talk about this for a second. Verse 24 through 28 says, Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I did not scatter seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. <laughs> What will you do with what God gives you? God is the owner and has the right to recover what he manages. And the issue is, I want it to be said, whatever you gave to me, God, I multiplied it. I made it better. Did you make it better after it came into your hands? That's what the wicked doesn't understand. The wicked exploits it. The wicked uses it, runs through it. And you have to ask yourself, Lord, did I make this better? Did I multiply this? Did I... Put this in the kingdom. That's why the Bible is so clear, man, about how God multiplies our seed because when we trust God, it puts us in a position to always make better what God gives to us. God thoroughly disapproves of slothfulness and people who do nothing. God is not into division and, and subtraction. He's into addition and multiplication. And God expects those who have the ability to invest to do so, to get a return on what they have been given, 
to use wisdom in our finances, to find a financial advisor, to not live out of your front pocket. Just because you may come from a family that knew nothing about finances, you have the ability now to make good financial decisions, to have a budget, to think properly about your money. All the budget is is something that tells your money where to go. So you got to seek God's wisdom. You know, you can't go your own way. You got to say, Lord, I want to make sure I do right by money. And let, let, me, let me go a little deeper. Here are five perspectives of a Christ-centered financial plan. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lay into you on this. One is, we're going to, first things first, you ready? The tithe. We got to stop arguing about this. Y'all. It's just, it is what it is. <laughs> Malachi 3 and 10, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. If there may be food in my house, try me now in this, said the Lord, and I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. Look at me. The tithe is money. It is 10% of your gross income. Gross because give unto Caesar what Caesar, give unto God what's God's. Taxes take off the top. God gets his tithe off the top. So if you got $10,000, $1,000 of that goes to God. Where does it go? In the storehouse. What's the storehouse? The place where you're being fed the word of God, where you're looking right now. (laughs) The ministry, the church that you're being blessed by. And God says, when you do that, there'll be meat in my storehouse to do the things that I need done in the world. Woo. And when you do that, when you give, can you imagine if every single person who said, I'm a member of Mount Zion Church, that's my church, that's my covering, that's the people that pray over me, that's the, my family. If every single person trusted God in this area, we would turn the world upside down. The fact is, often 20% of the people do 80% of the giving. We have got to get to a point where you trust God in this area. And when you say, I don't tithe, what are you saying? Lord, I don't trust you. Are you saying, Lord, I'm going to lose my house fooling around with you? What are you really saying? Lord, this is my money. You can give money to good deeds, but it doesn't mean you're a tither. Tithe means, Lord, I give this your way. I'm putting things in order. I'm starting 2021 off right. If you've never been a tither, I want to encourage you now to start this year off saying, from this moment forward, 10% of what God has given in my life, I am going to tithe. That, that's powerful, true story. Names are not important, but a wonderful young man. God's doing great things in his life. Came into a relationship with Jesus Christ, man, and wanted to go back. And like, you know what? Everything that I've made in my job, over time, when I wasn't a tither, he was like, I'm going to catch up. I'm going to make up all my tithe, and I'm going to tithe going forward. And, and God has just opened up so many amazing blessings in his life. Because I'm telling you, when you do it God's way, man, whoo, my goodness. But listen, the promise is true in that. One of the things that I love, and I want to just share this with you, when you tithe and God opens the windows of heaven, God puts a covering around your blessing. He rebukes the divine for your sake. One of the things that protects your money, protects your legacy, protects you from all these, you know, schemes and manipulative people is that you're a tither. God rebukes the devourer. He rebukes that stuff. He keeps it away from you. It's nothing like being a tither. God's not trying to get something from you. He's trying to get something to you. You got to get that curse out of your house. That 10% belongs to God. But then you got to secondly spend less than what you earn. Whatever you earn, spend less than that. Y'all heard me many times say, act your wage. Spend less. You can't spend more than what you make. You keep running to debt. That's number three, avoid the debt. Anything you can do to avoid debt, do it. Stop excessive credit card usage. You got to know good debt and bad debt. I know some of you saying, but I got these student loans. Well, that's good debt. I got a mortgage. That's good debt. But you got to avoid all this other debt of, Run up your credit card because you're online shopping and buying all this stuff that you don't want. You got to avoid that. But then you have to give generously. Giving is the antidote to greed. When you are a generous spirit, 
You're able to give. You see, I'm a tither, I'm a seesaw, and I'm a giver. I'm a giver. I give to organizations and things in the community. It's just my nature to give. Because guess what? As I tithe, God keeps giving back to me more than I even had in the first place, and I'm just being more generous. The tithe, the offering, and then God keeps giving me money to be more generous because the more I have, the more I want to give away because God keeps blessing me. That's the principle. People who release it are the ones who have it. The ones who hold on to it, that's all you have. You got to say, Lord, make us. I'm praying in 2021 that God makes this ministry so generous that people will just be blessed so to the degree that you just keep on being a blessing, that we just keep on doing what God has called us to do. But then have financial margin. Things happen, good things, and then bad things happen. Maybe you're doing just fine now, but maybe your parents need something or maybe your child needs something. You know, maybe friends need something. You got to be able to operate with a financial margin, create boundaries. You can't save everybody. <laughs> you cannot. You got to be able, man, to walk this out. And, and I just think it's, I think it's so important. A lot of times for goals and long-term goals, you know, we got to be thinking about how do I set something aside? Like you got to have something set aside to help people. But then you got to say, you know what? I can't let that take advantage of me. Sometimes you got to be real with yourself. You got to be real with yourself. You got to say, look, my, I'm a generous person, but you got to know how people are. You can help a person nine times straight. That 10 times you say no, they'll say, you ain't never done nothing for me. So you got to be clear. Do what you can do. And when you've done all you can do, you got to move on. But listen, what system will you ascribe to? Can I talk to you for a second? Think about these seven things. Curse the blessed. I don't know about you, but I want to walk in the blessing of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord, according to Deuteronomy, is when I obey God's word and I have these blessings shall overtake me, but curses when I disobey God's word. And God is very clear about giving in the scripture. He's very clear about how we handle our finances. I don't want to be under the curse. You are cursed with the curse if you're not a tither. I don't want that curse on my life, on my children's life, I want to walk in the blessing of the Lord. So some people think, well, I ain't cursed because I got a lot of money. Well, you don't realize something. You could have a whole lot of money and be cursed, right? And you could have a little money and be blessed. I want the blessing of the Lord. Why? Because watch this. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow. I don't want nothing that's going to stress me out. People got more money, got more problems. Why? Because you haven't understood the blessing. The blessing is deeper than the money. Number two, buying and selling versus giving and receiving. We use your entire life savings for internal gain or external giving. What is it about for you? Have a different mindset. How do you think outwardly of leaving a legacy? Number three, striving or resting. Are you going to keep striving and out here grinding and or you're going to rest in God's will. You're going to do what you have to do and finally rest in the assurance of God that God will take care of the rest. Lack or abundance. <laughs> Let this sink in. You're going to live in lack all your life. At some point, you've got to be tired of lack. You've got to be tired of struggling. Some people like the struggle because you like the attention. I don't want the struggle. I want to declare for your life the struggle is going to end this year. We're going to get out of this Debbie Downer, you know, always walking around, you know, ain't nobody doing nothing for me. We're going, to get, we're going to get out of that. We're going to walk in Luke 6, 38. Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your bosom. For the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Abundance requires sacrifice. You want abundance in your life, you got to sacrifice. You got to put something in it. As I give and I put seed in the ground, I'm expecting a harvest. And you know what? You always reap more than you sow. Do you have fear of loss versus generosity? Will you spend your entire life afraid of losing what you have? Or are you going to spend your time investing in others? being generous and keep moving forward. That's one of the things we decided to do with our ministry when the pandemic hit and we shut down. We said, are we going to be afraid of losing our 
church and are oh, we going to trust God and continuously be generous and be a blessing and pour out and bless people? So we start feeding people. We start, you know, providing scholarships. We start doing what we were doing. And because we took care of all that, God continued to take care of this ministry. We trust God. This is God's church. So I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to walk in fear. I'm going to keep being who God has called me to be. I keep telling y'all, you keep being who God called you to be and God will take care of the rest. Are you going to be needs-based or faith-based? You're going to walk your whole life out, letting your needs determine your life or your faith. What I taught you in part one of this about going to another level of faith, you know, Philippians 4, 19, and my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. We see that scripture, but don't understand where it comes from. The apostle Paul was thanking the church at Philippi for sowing into his ministry. He said no other church communicate. That word communicate means to share, to give. No other church communicated to me, Paul said, like you did, to help my ministry flourish. And Paul says, because you sold into the work of the Lord, the kingdom in my life, Paul says, my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. See, so stop taking that scripture out of context and declaring that scripture over people's life who hadn't sown nothing. That don't apply to you. When you are sore and to God's work, God will turn right back around and sow into you. Because if you take care of what belongs to God, God will take care of what belongs to you. You take care of God's house, he'll take care of your house. People of God, listen to me. Living a kingdom life. This is the ultimate goal. This is it. Kingdom giving is kingdom living. You are a king's kid. And this concept of financial, you know, giving and living is tied to a kingdom perspective. See, we're in a different kingdom. We're in the kingdom of God. And because we walk in the kingdom of God, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. God has cattle on a thousand hills. He owns it all. We are stewards. Our father is the king. So we're supposed to be blessed. When we walk in the financial principles that God has laid out in his word, man, we cancel debt. We cancel the curse of poverty over our lives. We continue to walk in blessings and we always have more than they pay us. Why? Because we are kingdom citizens. I told you in the midst of this pandemic last year that it will have nothing to do with you economically. That whatever happens economically won't impact you. Because if you walk in the kingdom, blessing, God will prosper you in a pandemic. And I speak that over your life. I speak it over your life now. You're not going under. You're going to walk in blessings. People of God, I just want y'all to lay hold of this. God is not a respecter of persons. Man, God wants people to love him so much that you trust him in this area. Wherever your heart is, your treasure will be. Don't tell me how much you love God and you don't trust God in this area. We get this right, everything changes. What God wants to do in this ministry, what God wants to do in your life, I've already declared that everything we do going forward is debt free. I've already declared it over your life that God's about to bring you into so much abundance that you're going to be walking in spaces. You're going to be homeowners. You're going to be owning. This is a year of acquisition. And you hear New Year's Eve? Acquisition. But it happens because you make sound financial decisions. You put God first. You walk in wisdom regarding finances. You cancel debt. And you are generous. You always trying to figure out a way to give. You know, this Sunday is the fifth Sunday coming up of January 2021. We're closing out a 21-day um, fast, faith, fit, meditation journey. And a part of that, I've asked you to save a dollar a day, one, four quarters every day. You and your children. Teach your children this principle. And I've asked you on this Sunday coming up, to sow that $21 is an act of faith going forward to seal the deal on this 21-day meditation. Now, now, this is how I know you really are growing. 
You don't give the $21 and say, I now see I gave for the day. That, no, no, that's not how you do that. No, you give your tithe, you give your offering, and the $21 is the third area that you say this is a sacrifice because it really isn't a sacrifice until you are stretched. Now, for some of you, you know who I'm talking to. $21 to you is like, so maybe, you're, maybe you've been doing $10 a day. Maybe you've been doing $100. I don't know what you've been doing, but whatever that level of giving is for you that stretches you, that becomes sacrifice on this Sunday coming up, if we're there, if we're 2021 and we're going to be where God wants us to be, our tithe will go to another level because we'll have more tithers. Our offering will go to another level because we have more generous people. And we will see everybody under the side of my voice who heard this word, that $21 seed or whatever more you give beyond that will show up this Sunday as we close that deal. I speak blessings over your life, over your family. We're going to another level and I want you to walk in blessings unapologetically because I love you as your pastor and I want the best for you this year. <sighs> Father, I speak blessings over your people. I come against every curse of finance. I come against debt. I come against a mindset that has prevent prevented your people from walking in obedience in this area, free them now. Release new tithers. Release a spirit of generosity. Lord, I pray, God, that somebody is impressed upon today to say, I haven't been tithing, but let me go back and catch up. Let me make this right with God this year for not only myself, but for my family. And I thank you that it's already done in Jesus' name. Now, if you want a relationship, I want you to email us. If you want to be a part of this ministry, salvation at mtzionnashville.org. I would love to connect with you. We just want to be connected, and we appreciate you so much. So why don't you do that right now? We thank God for you. We really do. We really, really do. And thank you so much. We cannot wait to hear from you, and I cannot wait to connect with you. Thank you for tuning in. And I pray God to blessings be upon your life. May God bless you and may God keep you with your blessed self in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to the Bible study today and I pray you will bless. You know, it is our hope this year that we can help you to grow, to be a better disciple of Jesus Christ. And to that end, we hope you will continue to stay connected to this ministry as we're going to bring a relevant word to you every single week. Thank you so much for also supporting this ministry. And if you didn't get an opportunity earlier to give, I pray that you will give by one of the platforms you see right here. I want to make sure you do just that because your giving allows us to continue to touch the lives of God's people. Thank you. Whether you text to give, whether you mail it in, know we appreciate you so very, very much. So thank you again. And I pray God's blessings be upon you and yours. Until next time, God bless.